Well, happy Advent and welcome to, uh, to my home. Welcome to my office. My name is Father Mark Toops, a priest of the Diocese of South Louisiana, right now in Grand Isle, Louisiana, and author of uh, the Rejoice Advent series from Ascension. And this year, we are finding our place in the Advent story. Can't wait to celebrate this Advent with you and very much looking forward to being with you tonight, as well as the other Sundays of Advent as we get ourselves ready for the week and celebrate the gift of what God's doing in all of our lives in this very precious and beautiful Advent series. This uh, beginning of Advent is very interesting, I think, for all of us here in Grand Isle. I was with my family just a few days ago for Thanksgiving as we served Thanksgiving dinner in the parking lot uh, to all those who are here on the island who continue to recover from Hurricane Ida. Certainly, as we begin the journey of Advent together, uh, I would certainly ask for you to pray uh, for all of us here in Grand Isle. Hurricane Ida was the strongest storm ever on record to hit Louisiana. And uh, Grand Isle is an island in the Gulf of Mexico where I am pastor. And uh, we're, we're kind of ground zero for Hurricane Ida. I have never needed Advent more uh, as Advent is a time where we need hope. And so um, it's going to be a very personal journey for me this year. As I pray, it's a very personal journey for you as we all uh, desire more hope in our life. And um, as we prepare to encounter the person of Jesus Christ this Christmas. So welcome to Advent. Welcome to tonight. It's a real gift to be with you tonight. A couple housekeeping details as we find ourselves getting ready for this Advent season. Tonight, of course, you're going to need your Advent wreath. You're going to need a way to light your Advent wreath. You're also going to need the prayer cards that accompany our Rejoice Advent journey. If you don't have those prayer cards, you can always go to rejoiceprogram.com and find out how to get those prayer cards either for tonight or in the future. The two cards that we're going to use are for the blessing of the Advent wreath as well as for the first Sunday of, of Advent. So with that, let's bless the Advent wreath and then we will bless our hearts by lighting the candle for the first week of Advent. So using the prayer card that has the blessing of the Advent wreath there already for you, let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And our scripture reading is from Isaiah tonight. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it, with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for your son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the savior of every nation. Lord God, bless us as we light the candles of this wreath. May this wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly. Do not delay. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're also now going to use the prayer card that has um, all that we need for the first week of Advent. God, our Father, grant your faithful servants the resolve to run forth to meet your son, Jesus, with righteous deeds at his coming, so that we may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and God forever and ever. Amen. At this point, I would invite you to join me as we light the first candle, the first violet candle of the Advent wreath, which draws us into the first week of Advent. We are reading from the Gospel of Luke. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. She was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you promised your chosen people a Savior who would restore all things and recreate the world anew. We give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be with us on this Advent journey as we joyfully prepare our hearts for the celebration of that wondrous day when the Word was made man and patiently await the coming of your Son at the end of time. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, before we move on, hang on to that prayer card. And I want to invite you to look at the image with me. So just, just look at the image. I think sacred art, uh, it speaks to us if we allow our hearts to be just sensitized to the what beauty wants to do, communicate uh, not only something, but someone. And I'm drawn by several aspects of the painting. I was, of course, immediately drawn to, to Mary, who's adorned in blue, and of course, the angel Gabriel, which is off to her left. Now look off to the top right of the angel Gabriel, and it's this image of God the Father, who is almost sending Gabriel to the Blessed Mother. Just let yourself behold. Look at Mary's right shoulder. There's just seems to be that which is radiating from the angel Gabriel, which is imaged for us in the painting. But I I almost feel almost a gentle uh, or or loving presence radiating as I I look at the the painting. And as you find yourself just beholding the beauty of beauty, just let the Lord speak to you about what's there. I love the Annunciation. I love the image of the Annunciation. Maybe just to offer a few words of encouragement to all of us as we begin the Advent journey. Two things stand out to me as I uh, hear the words of the Annunciation and see uh, the reality revealed in the beauty of the sacred art this year. The first thing that I just find really encouraging is the fact that God took the initiative to reach out to Mary. It wasn't Mary who said all the right things to get God to pay attention. It's not that Mary... Um, had a magic formula of, of, of activity, things that she could do that would entice God to come. No, God, God, God took the initiative in the United nation. God's the one who sends Gabriel to Mary. God is the one who chooses to fill her with life. God is the one who wants to be a part of her life so much that he, he chose in his own initiative to reveal himself in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. The first thing that's just good news for all of us is that God's taking the initiative. And that's good news because sometimes it's hard to see God in the midst of life. And and sometimes it's even harder to see God in the midst of the holidays, right? There's just a lot of activity. My holidays this year weren't certainly what I expected them to be, you know, during the summer or months ago. I would never have imagined that, gosh, in the last days of November, I would still be knee deep in hurricane relief and feeding people who were hungry and in need in my parking lot. That's not what I thought my holidays would look like. And, you know, for for some of us, maybe your holiday, your your Thanksgiving experience and the early days of this holiday season are filled with grace. And if that's where you are, awesome. But for some of us, if you can't find God in the midst of it, like here's the good news tonight. He's reaching out to you. 
He's taking the initiative just like he did in Mary's life. And the second thing that I found to be really encouraging was that not only did he reach out to Mary, but he met her in her current circumstances and the reality of life, right? And maybe that's good news for, for some of us who are watching. Maybe you need God to be with you in the midst of your current circumstances because if your current circumstances are either difficult, then a lot of us don't want to be there. We want to be somewhere else. Well, like, stay still. Let God take the initiative and meet you in the midst of the struggle. Or maybe this year or these last couple of days haven't met your expectations. And, and sometimes when life doesn't meet our expectations, either we blame ourselves for what had not happened or did happen, or we blame God for the unmet expectations. And, and God just wants to meet you in the midst of the circumstances of your life because that's who he is and that's where we're going to find him the most. So wh wherever you find yourself as we begin the journey together, two things just to hold on to tonight. Number one, God's taking the initiative. That's awesome. And number two, God's going to meet us in our ordinary current circumstances. And so my prayer for all of us this Advent is that we would let ourselves be found by God and that we would let ourselves um, be where we are, not expecting ourselves to be not where we are or somewhere else or someone else. Like, it's okay. It's also important, I think, for us to get in touch with what we want from God during the Advent season, not just at the end of the Advent season. Maybe some of us need to hear him speak. Maybe some of us need to maybe feel his love and his presence. But whatever's in your heart, I want to give you permission just to ask the Lord for whatever is on your heart. I, I can't wait to be with you. We'll be together every Sunday night during Advent. So for the next three weeks after this, we will be together um, here together. And if um, you want to walk the journey together throughout the entire Advent season, I would just encourage you to go to rejoiceprogram.com. And there you can find out more about the journals. You can for, find out more about the, the, the art prints, the eBooks, and the Christmas cards and all that is a part of the, uh, the Rejoice Advent Meditation Series Gift from Ascension to You. So go to rejoiceprogram.com just to find out more. Again, we'll be together next week. And until we see each other next week, I pray that your week is filled with grace. But maybe we could ask God to bless us and maybe we can end tonight with prayer by reaching back into our baptism. There's a, an Ephetha prayer in the baptismal rite after the actual baptism where we ask God to release the grace of baptism into our senses. And I'm going to expand that prayer that is in baptismal rite and ask the Lord to bless us tonight so that he blesses our Advent season. So pray with me now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, I ask for your blessing upon every one of us. Bless our minds that we would know your mysteries. Bless our ears that he, we would hear your voice. Bless our eyes that we would see your face. Bless our lips that we would forever speak your praise. Bless our hearts that we would know your mercy and your love. Bless our hands that we would serve you well, our feet that we would walk in your path. And may you who took the initiative in Mary's life. Bless us all tonight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. God bless.